Welcome back. We're doing P1. It's the Hired here. It's Friday the 13th of November. It's the year 11 paper. And we're going to do 78 on 9 this time. This is the only 3 left. So, we kick off here. Uh, radioactive thorium nucleus emits a particle to become a radium nucleus. So there's your thorium. Goes to radium and there's the particle. An incomplete equation of this decay is given below. Now, the important thing about this is there's four marks for this. So that's an alpha particle, 4, 2, HG. You can put in alpha there if you wish. Now remember these numbers along the bottom all add up. So some number add 2 gives me 90. So it must be the 8. 2, 2, 8, add 4 must be 2, 3, 2. That's it done. And that's 4 marks for that. Like, sweet heavens. Alpha. 1, 2, 3, 4. Radiation from radioactive sources can be harmful to the human body. State a damage that, that could be caused by gamma radiation. Now, a full sentence, I'm not going to write it. Cancer. So you pick your full sentence out of that. Alpha radiation is not as dangerous as the others if the source is touched by the human body. Explain why this is, again, your full sentence. I'm just giving this to get it done. Absorbed by human skin so it doesn't enter the body give a situation where alpha radiation would be very dangerous so if you ingest in other words eat it or inhale breathe it it enters the body then and then it's very dangerous it's a it ionizes a lot when not in use radioactive sources are contained in lead blocks Give two other methods of protecting the user when handling radioactive sources. So the answer is protective gear, clothing, whatever you like to call it, tongs for handling it, um, length of time to a minimum. And those will do rightly. Any of those three. Again, Two, so two sentences. So here we are in the next question number eight. Two people ride on a tandem. Now the two people, there's a tandem. The total area of the tires in contact with the ground is 24 centimetres squared, so that's grand, that's an area, two dimensions. The combined weight of one of the cyclists and the bike is 800 newtons, and the total pressure exerted by the ground is that Calculate the weight of the other cyclist. So, pressure equals force over area. So, the pressure is 60. And it's newtons per centimetre squared. So, that's all right. Is equal to the force over 24. Right, so we've seen what we've done. Pressure equals force over area. Now, don't be afraid to go to the stupidity. So, 2 times 5 equals 10. So, 60 times 24 is equal to the force. Calculator. Turn it on after a minute and a half time. 60 times 24. 1440. 1440 is equal to the force. Try it again. 60 times 24. 1440. Now, that's the force. 800 newtons. So the combined weight of one of the cyclists and the bike is 800. And the total pressure exerted is that to kill the weight. So something, so the weight of the other cyclist and the weight, see the way they say weight here? That's a force, and that's going to be a newtons, and that's newtons, or daily value, plus 800 newtons. So there's no trick sitting there for us. It's equal to 1440. So some number is equal to 1440, take away 800. 640. So the weight of the other person is 640 newtons. And the trick they could have asked there is... What's their mass? So remember, if it's the weight of 640 newtons, their mass would have been 64 kilos. So always be careful. 
Newton, Newton, something plus 800 is that many Newton, so everything's grand, all in the same unit. Question number nine. A helicopter has a mass of 2,000 kilos and lifts off fairly, so the upward force is 25,000 newtons up. The upward force exerted by the helicopter blades is 25,000. By force finding the weight of the helicopter, calculate the upward acceleration. So, weight is equal to mass by g. So the weight is 2,000 by 10, which is 20,000 newtons pulling it down. So I have 25,000 newtons pulling it up, and I have 20,000 newtons pulling it down. There's the force of the blades, and there's the weight. So the weight is 20,000 newtons. Now I want to find the acceleration. So I know from Newton's second law, resultant force is equal to mass by acceleration. So the resultant force, well I know there's 25,000 up. And there's 20,000 down. Now this be careful, and the mass is 200 kilo, or to, sorry, 2,000 kilos by A. So 5,000 is equal to 2,000 times A. So 5,000 over 2000 is equal to A. So again, do it in no rush. 5000 divided by 2000, 2.5, 2.5. Check it. 5000 divided by 2000, 2.5. Fair enough? Oh, Hello, Betty. Did you get a length to turn upstairs? Oh, I never got that length, Betty. That'll do, thank you. The helicopter lifts off from rest, calculate its velocity after four seconds. So V is equal to U plus 18. That was better, yeah, come in, just in case you're right. So V was the initial velocity, nothing, plus A, 2.5 by 4. So the velocity is equal to 2.5 by 4 is 10 meters per second. So there's three marks for that. See if you don't know that, and remember, where did that equation come from? A equals V minus U over T. A T equals V minus U. V equals U plus A T. U equals V minus A T. Now, you learn to rearrange them, or you learn them off by heart. Whichever way, but you still need to know them. Another helicopter rises from rest with a constant acceleration. Sketch the velocity time graph on the axis below. It's a velocity time graph, and I told you, velocity time graph, one velocity at a time. Two, slope is acceleration. And three, displacement is area enclosed. Right? Another helicopter rises from rest with a constant acceleration, so it's got a constant slope. And I have no ruler. Fair enough. Should have had a ruler there, you make sure you have a ruler. So there's got a constant slope, so therefore it's got a constant acceleration. Constant slope, constant acceleration. So there's that paper done. Again, lots to be learned from this paper. Go through each question. There were some nasty questions in this paper. The examiner was leaving lots of nastiness around, especially with that spring question. Go and have a look at it, and I'll see you shortly.